Question number 33. The distance traveled at a constant speed is directly proportional to the time of travel. So if Olivia, sorry, traveled 112 miles in three and a half hours, how many miles will Olivia travel in 8.9 hours? Okay. So we get our handy dandy calculator out. Okay. So let's move our calculator if we can. All right. So we're just going to cross multiply. We're going to multiply 112 times 8.9 enter and we're going to divide that by 3.5. Okay. So X is going to be 284.8. The answer is B. Again, we just set up the ratio. 34. A balloon takes off from a location that is 158 feet above sea level, and it rises 56 feet per minute. Write an equation to model the balloon's elevation H as a function of time. So we know it, it, we're trying to find the height of this thing. It has a rate of 56 feet per minute. So 56T, where T is in minutes, tells us how high it goes up for every minute. But it started off at a location of 158. So when T was zero, the height was 158. So our equation needs to look like this. H equals 156T, sorry, 56T plus 158. So our answer would be B. Next question, 35. Graph the absolute value equation. Well, we can just plot points and plug. So the first thing we have to do is what is going to make this, what's X have to be to make that zero? Because we know that's going to be the vertex. Well, if x equals negative 4, that expression would be 0. So we know at negative 4, we should have a point of the vertex. So it should be there. Should be there. Should be there. And it should be there. So we have a winner with b. And then all you have to do is just plot. And then you just plot points if you're not sure. Just double check. So make x equal to anything you want and just look. Okay. So if you made x equal to 0, y would have to be 4. x equals 0, y is 4. Perfect. Okay, when x equals negative 8, so negative 8 plus 4 is negative 4. Absolute value of negative 4 is 4. So when it equals 8, it's 4. So again, everything tells you it is b. Remember, absolute value uh, equations are going to make a v. All right, now, find when y equals the negative absolute value of 2x plus 3. So we know this one's going to go down. So they all go down. So that really didn't help us much. But we know it's y is 0 when this equation equals 0. So let's set that equal to 0. So 2x plus 3 equals 0. So 2x equals negative 3. So x equals negative 3 over 2. So when x equals negative 3 over 2, y is 0. Okay, so that's a positive, so that's no good. That's negative on the y. That's positive on the y. So there we go. D is at negative one and a half, negative three halves. So the answer for that one would be D. Moving on, 37. What is the vertex of the function? Okay, well, our x value is whatever makes this zero. And this is our y value. So negative 3x plus 2 equals 0. Negative 3x equals negative 2. So x equals negative 2 thirds over negative 3 or negative 2 over negative 3. So x is positive 2 thirds. Our y is just negative 4. So our vertex is 2 thirds Good negative morning, 4. PKA. Welcome back, seniors. So again, the vertex is 2 thirds negative 4, so the answer looks like it would be B. 
38. Write an equation that is a translation of y absolute value equals absolute value of x left one unit. So we're going to go left one unit, and we're going to go up two units. So the parent function is y equals absolute value of x. So we know y equals the absolute value of x minus h plus k. Well, our h values, if it's going left 1, so it's minus 1, and our k values 2. So it's going to be y equals the absolute value of x minus negative 1 plus 2. So our answer should be b. Okay, 39. Graph the inequality. Okay, well, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get it in y equals mx plus b. I'm going to get it in slope-intercept form. So I got 4x minus 2y is less than negative 3. I'm going to subtract 4x to each side. So I'm going to get negative 2y less than negative 4x minus 3. Now I'm going to divide each side by negative 2. And what's special when we divide by a negative? We have to flip the inequality sign. So it's going to be y is greater than negative 4 divided by negative 2x is going to be 2x plus 3 halves. So I'm looking for a dotted line that's above, uh, that's shaded above. Okay. My y-intercept is at 3 halves, so I'm looking for 3 halves, 3 halves, 3 halves, 3 halves, so they're all there. My slope is a positive 2, so up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1. Okay. And now it needs to be above the line. So it looks like for 39, my answer is A. Again, I always put it in slope-intercept form, or y equals mx plus b. Okay, number 40. An electronic store makes a profit of $20 for every DVD player it sells and $45 for every DVD recorder sold. The manager's targets to make at least $180 a day. So... He gets, hold on, let's keep reading. Write and graph an inequality that represents the number of both kind of DVD players and recorders to be sold. So for every player he makes, sells, he makes $20. So we got $20 for every uh, player he makes and $40, $45 for every recorder he makes. And he wants to make more at least that. So he wants to make that at least, if not more. So it should be 20p plus 45r is greater than or equal to 180. So A right now is okay. B is out and C is out. So it's between A and D. But he wants to make more. So just by looking at the graph, he wants to make more than that. So the only answer that meets it is A. Write an inequality for this graph, okay? So there's two ways to go about this, okay? You have a maximum of negative 6 there, and you got a 5 there, okay? The way I would do it is I would say y, okay, is less than or equal to... So when x equals 0, what's 5? What's a y? So y is 5. So my y-intercept's 5. So what's my slope? Well, I'm at negative 6 and I'm at 5. So my rise would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And my run would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So it would be 5, 6, x. Okay. That's how I would set it up. Now, to get it to look like what you have below, multiply everything by 6. So you get 6y is less than or equal to 5x plus 30. Okay, so they have the x first, so subtract x. So I'm going to get negative 5x plus 6y is greater than or equal to 30. Okay, well, I don't have that, so now multiply everything by negative 1. So 5x minus 6y is greater than or equal to negative 30. So the answer should be D. All right, 42, graph the absolute value inequality. Okay, so it's y is less than, so we're looking for a dotted line below. 
Well, what makes this zero? That's going to be our x value. Well, x has to be negative 2. Negative 2. So it looks like the answer for 42 is A. Find the vertex. Again, what's going to make the x value? 0. And that is going to be your y value for the uh, vertex. And then remember, absolute values make that 45 degree angle. 43. Solve the system by graphing. Okay. Uh, I'm going to take a little bit more time on this one, and I'm going to set each one in y equals mx plus b because it's just easier for me to graph. So I'm going to get negative y equals negative, so it's going to be positive 3x minus 10. I'm going to divide everything by negative, so y equals negative 3x plus 10. So I'm going to have a y-intercept at 10 and a slope of negative 3. That looks like this. Looks like this. Okay. So I know it's one of those two. The next one is 4x minus 4y equals 8. I'm going to divide everything by 4, so I get x minus y equals 2. I'm going to subtract the x over, so I get negative y equals negative x plus 2. And I'm going to divide everything by 1, negative 1. So y is going to equal x minus 2. So I'm looking for a slope at negative 2, and it goes. So C works, but so does D. So what's the difference? Well, what point do they cross at? Well, 1, 2, 3, 1. So 3, 1 is the answer. So that one says 1, 3. This one says 3, 1. So on 43, the answer is D. Okay, next one, 44. Same concept. So y equals negative x at negative 9. So at negative 9, I should have a negative 1 slope. I do. In A and C, I have that slope. All right, so let's look at the next one. 3x minus y equals negative 11. So negative y equals negative 3x minus 11. So y equals 3x plus 11. So that's good. So A and C meet the criteria. They look the exact same. So what point is this? So it's negative 2, 4. It looks like so negative 5. And then negative 2, 4. So I'm looking for negative 5, negative 4. So 44... The answer should be A. 45. Without graphing, classify each system as independent, dependent, or inconsistent. Okay, independent means the slopes are not equal. Dependent and inconsistent means the slopes are equal. The dependent means it's the same line. And inconsistent means this they are not the same sign. They're just parallel. So I already got the first one on y equals mx plus b. Let's get the second one in that. So negative 8x plus 2y equals 12. So going to add 8x to each side. So 2y equals 8x plus 12. Divide each side by 2. y equals 4x plus 6. It is the exact same line. So since the b equals b and the slopes equal to the slopes, it's dependent. So which one of these says dependent? That one does. So 45, the answer is c. OK, 46. Solve by substitution. OK, on your test, I do not care how you solve it, if that makes any sense. Just solve it. So I have two equations, 5x minus y equals 5, 5x minus 3y equals 15. So let's just subtract the bottom one and cancel the 5x's. So when I do that, I'm going to get 2y equals negative 10. So divide each side by 2. So y is going to equal negative 5. OK. So when I plug that back into any of the equations, so I'm going to go 5x minus negative 5 equals 5. All I did was I plugged in the y value for this. So I'm going to get...